Hello and welcome to Combustion Inc. I'm your host Darcy Foster and this is a new segment, Formula One Chat. What we'll be doing is breaking down all the latest Formula One news, race previews, race reviews and everything in between. The set is still very much a work in progress as you can see. I've just pulled through a little bit of my motoring memorabilia. There's a whole lot kind of sitting over to one side that I couldn't really figure out where to place it to be honest and I know the F333 before you comment the F333 is not a Formula 1 car but it's a Ferrari and it looks good so we're trying to make this as motorsport like as possible not specifically Formula 1 but we will use this set for Formula 1 news as well and possibly motoring news we'll we'll see what happens. So the biggest news in the world of Formula 1 this week was Fernando Alonso's retirement from Formula One. After Daniel Ricciardo announced his shock move to Renault for the 2019 season, the dominoes are beginning to fall and the 2019 grid is beginning to take shape. And only two days after Alonso's announcement, McLaren announced the signing of Renault hotshot, Carlos Sainz Jr., if I can get that out. Like Max Verstappen and Pierre Gasly, Carlos Sainz was actually a product of the Red Bull Junior squad. And though he was at Renault, he was still under contract from Red Bull, so he was on loan from Toro Rosso, but that appears to have been severed now, as obviously um, with the vacant set at Red Bull, you know, some people would have figured that Sainz would have gone there, but if you can cast your minds back to 2015, 2016, um, Max Verstappen and Carl Sainz had a very, very shaky partnership at Toro Rosso, and there was quite a few incidents, particularly the 2015 Singapore Grand Prix, where Max wouldn't let um, Carlos passed, which was kind of a you know selfish move, I believe. But what can you do? You know, it's that's racing. Sometimes you get selfish in them in the heat of the moments. But Sainz appears to have severed that relationship after signing for the working based outfit, and will become just the third Spaniard to drive for the McLaren team after Fernando Alonso and Pedro de la Rosa. Now the second set of McLaren is still very much up for grabs. Stoffel van Dorn hasn't had his contract renewed, and there's a lot of people thinking that. Maybe uh, the Formula 2 youngster Lando Norris might step in to partner science. But since McLaren signed technical director James Key from Toro Rosso, a brilliant, brilliant designer that McLaren hope with Carlos Sainz will spearhead them back to the front of the grid, Toro Rosso still want compensation for that. So they're thinking that maybe all the talk is in the paddock that Lando Norris might actually go to Toro Rosso first and kind of develop and everything before later moving on to McLaren in a few years. With signs out of the picture though, it seems the Red Bull drive will almost certainly go to Pierre Gasly. The Toro Rosso youngster has got undeniable talent and having a year's worth of that Honda Power Unit experience, he'll really be able to put that to good use with the with the um, the senior team. But back to Fernando, arguably one of the greatest drivers to ever grace the sport of Formula One. He'll be remembered not only for his double world championships with Renault, but also his incredible talent to extract every ounce of performance from a given car. From Mark Webber to Jacques Villeneuve, Alonso is cited commonly by many as one of the hardest opponents to face on track due to his incredible ability to actually use the disturbed air coming off the back of his car as a defensive tactic. I mean, I'm sure countless drivers have used tactics like this before, but no one used it as meticulously and as defensively or aggressively as Alonso did. Fernando will also be remembered for his incredible overtaking maneuvers, from taking Michael Schumacher around the outside of 130R at Suzuka, to his double overtake on Felipe Massa and Mark Webber at Interlagos in 2012. Fernando's sheer determination for go for the gap encapsulates Ayrton Senna's famous quote. Unfortunately, Fernando's glittering career may be remembered by many as one of missed opportunities. His insightful move to McLaren in 2007 was ultimately marred by the Spygate controversy and McLaren's preference of the younger Lewis Hamilton, rendering a potential fruitful partnership toxic. His second spell at Renault brought with it even more controversy when in August 2009, the details of the now infamous Crushgate came to light. Taking the seat occupied by the departing Kimi Raikkonen, Alonso's spell at Ferrari should have heated more titles, but was unfortunately thwarted by unreliability and a certain German. Sticking out just one more season would have at least heated a car that could have won at least a couple of races, and just two more seasons in 2017 would have brought Alonso the SF70H, a real title contender. Speculation aside though, with two world championships, 32 wins, 22 pole positions and 97 podiums, Fernando Alonso will remain one of the most successful drivers in Formula One history and an inspiration to fans and drivers alike for his passion, commitment and jovial character. Fernando, we love you and you'll forever be missed in the sport of Formula One. So thank you again for watching. More Formula One news will be coming at you very, very soon with the Belgian Grand Prix on next weekend. So thank you again for watching. Please remember to like because it helps me out immensely and subscribe. Thanks guys. 
Catch you later.